start your day with a smile. That's what they say. Who are they? I have no clue. But I have a couple of funny things that I want to open up with. I'm sure most of you are more than aware that we got screwed out of that Barbashev point last night. If you watch the game, it was a tic-tac-toe Barbashev march or so. Eichel, the play-by-play -play guy, even called it that way. Score! Tic-tac-toe play! That's going to be a goal from Michael with assist to Marcheseau and Barbashev. And they even showed that on the screen. And then you check the score sheet and there's no point for Barbashev. Is it like, I don't know, to screw all you people who found out that there was a plus 300 price on that? Because I guess they tried to claim that the player on Vancouver poke checked the puck away. But it was a glance at this, too. They clearly wouldn't have blown the whistle if there was a delayed penalty. That does not mean there's possession, so there should have been an assist. So we all got screwed. And while I don't think that's funny, what I do think is funny is after people get screwed, one of the things I do is look to see what they're doing because screwed people go wild. And I went on Twitter, and I just searched for bar assist. There was this guy littering every page demanding the Barbashev assist. The Vegas Golden Knights, they uploaded the goal to their fans, proud to upload it. And he puts, add a damn Barbashev assist as if the Vegas Golden Knights social media guy. Keep it, oh, you're right, sir. And put that into the system. I had a real good laugh. You know, it's, it's a laugh and a cry. It's like that actor's face, you know, the half sad, half smiling. That's kind of what it was. It was depressing not to get the point, getting screwed out of the point, but it was pretty hilarious to see that. And I just want to note, remember this for future instances, something that was unforeseen. I tried to tell you guys how awesome it is to have a whole line correlated on the top power play. Something we couldn't foresee was that Tomas Hurdle in his first game occupied a spot on that top power play. I would have been way less happy. I would have stuck to Eichel and Marcheseau had I known there was not that top power play correlation. Like, if you look at that Penguins game, the reason I chose all those guys is because they were on the top power play. Now, interestingly enough, in that game, it was the two non-power play guys on those lines who got the points. I did bring up Drew O'Connor, who was like a plus 140, and then it was Raquel who got the point on the second line. But they took Barbashev off that top power play. So in future instances, we have to be very weary of that. So in other Vegas Golden Knights games, now this is always subject to change, but on one of those power plays, he got the assist that Barbashev would have had. It was a face-off, and then he came in to back up the center and push it to the point. They score. That would have been a point. And that is why having people on that top power play is such a distinct advantage. Funny item number two, and maybe that will lead us into the first game for today. I forgot to mention this. You guys remember last Wednesday, we took the the Pasternak two points with the Zaka assist. We got it for like plus 500. That was before all our prices got neutered. Well, the next day, somebody DM'd me, and I think it was a girl. It was one of those names where you never really know what it is. And they sent me a picture, and... The message said, my dad told me to make this and send it to you. And it was a Hulk Hogan picture, like a Hulkamania, where he's got a bunch of pasta. I think it was when they sold that scam Hulk Hogan pasta in like the late 80s, early 90s. And with pasta mania. And Pasternak's face is photoshopped into Hulk Hogan's. And it says pasta mania. This guy, this fully grown adult with children, children old enough to work Photoshop. Won a bet because of the picks on here and then demanded his kid. I don't know how to do that. I want you to put David Pasternak's face on Hulkamania when he did the whole pasta thing. And this girl, I think, made this and sent it to me, as you can see right here. And pasta mania and all my pasta maniacs run wild on you. So what about tonight? Do you have the balls to go full bowl of pasta? little bit of Zaka, I am absolutely not going to do it. Absolutely not. Why? Because this is the type of bet where the neutered odds make a difference. We were getting plus 550 on this. Now, because they neutered us, plus 375, that's not good enough. Not in this matchup against a good defensive team like the Carolina Hurricanes. We've took the under six and a half 
in both of their previous matchups. That has been correct in both of their previous matchups. So I see no reason why I wouldn't want to try that one more time. The under six and a half in this game in no way, shape or form. Is it my favorite pick or anything like that? But I just wanted to introduce that bowl of pasta, little side of Zaka under six and a half in this game. And if you want a player prop in there to bring that to an even better, something like that, we've had Jake DeBrusque demoted from that second line. He was playing with Marshawn and Coyle. Now he's down on the third line. So second power play, third line. That's a good candidate to take an under half of a point prop on, especially against a good defensive team. So those are the two things I like in that game. Now we should probably go to the game. That kind of everything we've talked about in the last two weeks, it was a big buildup. It started against Detroit. And now we're going to see if it ends in Detroit tonight. And that is the Washington Capitals. Losers of six straight, six straight losses. I said, oh my God, we're getting the Washington Capitals at plus 115 to not make the playoffs. This is amazing. It was an immediate thousand. Apparently, if I say it's an immediate thousand and I throw my screenshot on there, what do you guys think I just make up bets that I don't like and then just try to send you off a cliff? No. But you needed to see that screenshot, and then I learned a bunch of you bet a lot because you saw that screenshot. i got to be real hesitant about sending you guys those screenshots. But I said I hope Detroit loses that game against Washington in Washington because I looked at it as one of Washington's last winnable games. That way they're forced to give us an even better price. Well, it went up to plus 170. I didn't show you a screenshot, but the people on the Patreon know how much I have on them to miss the playoffs, and that can be closed out tonight with a seventh straight loss against the Detroit Red Wings, two of the five teams who are vying for those two spots, and it's in Detroit. If you're somebody who didn't get in on all the fun, then I'll say go ahead and take yourself the Detroit Red Wings in this game against the Washington Capitals. If you're like me and have an exorbitant amount of money on the Capitals losing and not making the playoffs, you don't need to take anything in this game. If you want player props, don't worry. I'll get to that in just a second. But if you're a pizzeria guy, hey, that pizza man owes you after last night. You called him. You said, hey, give me those Canucks. And he goes, all right, the Canucks, anything else? No, I'll call you tomorrow. But now he knows. Now he's actually calling you. Hey, hey, do you want anything for tonight? I uh, got a great game last night. He's starting to sweat. You went to the pizzeria last night. You put in the Canucks. He's starting to sweat now. And now he's going to sweat a little bit more because we're taking Detroit at home against the Washington Capitals. The old, slow, awful, I've told you all year long, Washington Capitals. So you can take that one with your pizzeria owner. And then if you want to peel back the layers, you want to open up the body for surgery and see what the hell is in there. I'm going to talk about some top line, top power play correlation. Those of you on the Patreon from over the weekend, you know what I picked on there. It was an assortment of Dylan Larkin, Lucas Raymond, and David Perron. Top line, top power play correlation. So we were able to nail that relatively. Oh, it was a first period win, which is a great feeling. In this case... I don't see why I wouldn't do the same thing. You can take Larkin and Raymond both for a point. That's plus money. But what I'm going to try to do is take the Raymond assist with the Larkin point. He set him up beautifully for that power play goal. I'm hoping that replicates itself. But in a game that's so important, maybe because Detroit's not great defensively, maybe they trade chances and the score goes up. But as you saw in that Pittsburgh game, when there's a lot of stuff on the line, Games tend to be more close to the ass cheek variety. You're literally talking about you lose this game, you could be out of the playoffs. I wouldn't go too crazy with player props, but I will take a deli slice on those two players. Raymond, Dylan Larkin had a great game over the weekend. I'm looking for that to continue against the Washington Capitals. Let's go to another guy that we've talked about a lot over the last week. There are a couple of one and a half point props that you can potentially take. So let's discuss them. There's the Panarin one, which we'll get to in a minute. That's always that's always one that it's t- it tempts you every single time. But the other two, we're going for that Art Ross, McKinnon, Kucherov. This is a very simple case of 
Who am I getting the better price on? Are they at home or on the road? And who the hell are they playing? Well, I'm looking at both of these. Which opponent do you think it's easier to rack up points against? Minnesota or Columbus? All right. I think it's fair to say Columbus. Is that guy playing against Columbus getting the better price of the two? Oh, he is? Well, that's the one I'm going to be taking. I think this is a great price for Nikita Kucherov. Over one and a half points. It's almost even. It's like minus 105. He is the leader in points. If you didn't notice, it's not McDavid. It's not McKinnon. It's Nikita Kucherov. Hey, I'm glad you disrespect him. I don't know why his price is not the same exact one as Nathan McKinnon, but I'm not going to complain about it. I'm just going to take it yet again. He's just cashed in back-to-back-to-back games for us. Let's make it one more against the Columbus Blue Jackets. And the beautiful thing that you know about Kucherov, if they're up by one in the third, they will leave him out there for a full two minutes with that empty net because they know they're chasing those records. And yes, you can say the same thing about McKinnon, but we're not getting the same price and we're not getting that same opponent. Columbus on your own home ice? Yeah, give me the over one and a half for Nikita Kucherov. And I will not complain whatsoever if you add in that Braden point over one and a half points. I mean, that's a same game parlay that I like. Over one and a half for Braden Point, over one and a half for Nikita Kucherov. Then there's that Artemi Panarin situation. Once again, the Lafreniere assist. This is like the Barbashev assist from last night. This price, the, the, the 240s, 250s prices, they're just ridiculous. They really are. I, I don't even know what to say at this point. You know Panarin plays well against the Islanders. This is very hard for me not to put a little deli slice on, so I, I'm i okay with it. It's a rivalry game. I don't know. I think Panarin over one and a half points with this Lafreniere point or assist. It's just, it's at that point where I told you, you hit two out of three, Meatloaf said that ain't bad. You hit three out of four, it's starting to get ridiculous. And it, This really is starting to get ridiculous because this isn't even like the Keller Schmaltz who hit again in the last game, by the way. This is a guy getting two points and another guy getting an assist. So I will put a little deli sprinkle in there. What's a deli sprinkle? A deli slice and a little sprinkle? I'll put a little deli sprinkle of that bet in there. And then these last two late games I'm going to look at. One is a matchup between bottom-dwelling garbage. Two out of the playoff teams. And as you saw with St. Louis and Anaheim, or whether it was Anaheim and Calgary, it's another mix of the It's Calgary and the Sharks. There is potential hidden we're out of it ruckus. Who cares what happens? And I think there are opportunities here. And one thing that I like, Kadri and Kuzmenko, they got some brotherly love going on. They show clips of these guys. They love each other. They're always talking on the bench. They're producing no matter who they're playing, whether it's Edmonton or the game before that or even against Anaheim. They seem to be clicking a decent amount on the road against San Jose. I don't know. This seems like a pretty good opportunity to to rake up some points. There are other options on the team, but if I'm getting plus money with those two guys against the Sharks, it's weird. It's obscure. It's in a game that doesn't matter, but who knows? Those really have been providing a lot of value in this final week or two. I told you I was going to try to isolate those, and that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. And now we have a similar situation with one of the two teams. We got the LA Kings who are playing the Ducks. The Ducks the other night scored a ton of goals and a loss. I hope they do the same exact thing. I hope I hope this game is like a sneaky shootout. It's the, the I-5 rivalry, right? It was the five that goes down there, right? Yeah, I think so. And it's the Kings, Ducks. What I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm going to start with a classic. This is like that. It's not a quarter pounder with cheese, but it's like that that old number two, the two burgers and fries. And that is a Kopitar assist with the Kempe point. That's putting you well into plus money against an awful Ducks team who concedes a ton. The only fear I have, it's like, oh, you're playing a bad team, exactly what you saw the Kings do against the Sharks over the weekend, but that was the second half of a back-to-back. This is technically a rivalry game. I'm really hoping this looks like that Blues-Ducks game from the other night. Because the Kings are good defensively, I am scared. I had a ton of Anaheim props in that game. I would prefer both of the teams to be out of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, I'm going to take some two point swings for line mates on the Kings side. I really feel like one duo is going to get it. Can you kind of line it up? One sneaky bet that I saw 
was two points for Fiala. Now, he's obviously on the top power play, probably one of their best couple of players. So two for him and then one assist for Dubois, who's going to be his center on the third line. So you just need that random assist. It could be a free point on the faceoff or something like that. Plus 900 for that. And remember, it's the Ducks. There should be goals scored. There are many two-point line mate combos that will take you over plus a thousand. I also like a Drew Doughty assist. I don't know. I guess I'm picking this hoping that it kind of blows up. I do feel like either this game or that last game we talked about, Calgary Sharks, one of these is going to provide opportunities. And that's why I like my roulette approach. I don't have to invest a ton, but I put little sprinkles here, 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 here. One pays off plus a thousand. Take it easy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. But for real, I will talk to you tomorrow. I've been here long enough. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. Do me a favor. You know what you know what the favors are. The Jack Klompus, do me a personal favor. Take the pen, like the video, comment on the videos. It can be absolute Billy Madison gibberish when he's eating the soup at the dinner table. And then if you want, people really seem to be enjoying it. You could subscribe to the Patreon. I couldn't believe I was reading some of the comments. And yes, it's because I had a good weekend. But I, if I was you, if I was a new watcher of these videos and I read the comments yesterday, I bet Andy's paying those people to write those comments. That's how nice they were. So if you were one of those kind writer of comments, thank you very much. You really, you are, you are breathing new beliefs into me. Like that people out there are truly kind if you stack their pockets full of cash. So thank you so much for that. Uh, much appreciated. Hopefully I see the rest of you over there. If not, no worries. I will see you tomorrow. Take it easy. And let's see if the Capitals can fight to live another day. Later.